Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and gangers, welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 144 of the Spears Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I have two very important fucking things to say to you, cunts. Two very important things. Important thing number one, all right? Episode 150 of the podcast, recorded live, goes on sale this Tuesday. What date is that? It's Friday today when I'm recording this. So it's fucking the 11th. Uh, so, hey, <laughs> work it out yourself. I don't know. What is that? Ele- Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Like, I don't know, the 13th. Whatever. Tuesday. They go on sale. I'll be putting the link in the Speared Sundays podcast Facebook group. Or the link uh, on my website will be lewspears.com slash live. Uh, that link right now currently works and the reason for that is people who support me on patreon get early access and discounted tickets so they're buying their tickets already this is a quite a small show for me um because there's only one seat for every episode so it'll probably sell out very quick so if you want to guarantee your seat uh patreon's the best way to go through that and i'm pretty sure that the the discount you get makes the price of patreon pretty much the same so you whatever it doesn't cost you more money to go through that way and uh then you can guarantee yourself a fucking seat um and uh otherwise i would be very fucking quick as soon as it hits tuesday they'll be going on sale tuesday at uh 12 p.m uh australian time all right so that's the first thing loosebeers.com slash live or patreon right now if you want to grab your tickets so Episode 150, that's the thing. Second thing, even more important, okay? The Australian Podcast Awards have opened. The popular vote category is currently up. I'm looking at the other things. And guys, I really do think that a year-long campaign to win this thing may have been a little bit overkill because no disrespect to the other people in this competition, but I don't recognize a single fucking name podcast title, anything in this competition, I'm pretty sure that (laughs) mine might be the biggest by a mile because the voting has been open for a day. I already have 150 votes. The second place has 30. So look, I might be fucking what, quadrupling the votes, but hey, if I want to win this thing, I want to win it in the most disrespectful way possible. And also, can I just say... Fucking shame on you cunts. There are thousands of people that listen to this thing and I have 150 votes. Excuse me? I'm sorry. That means that more than 99% of you cunts have not voted. What are you doing? All right? Fucking get on there. Granted, the Australian Podcast Awards website is so fucking shit that you actually can't find the popular vote category on their website. So... I don't know. I'm going to tweet the link. It'll be on my Twitter and it's also in the Facebook group. Go and fucking vote. Otherwise, you're a piece of shit because I want, I want, here's what I want to happen. I want, I want like first place, me, thousand votes. Second place, whoever the fuck, a hundred votes. I want a 10 times second place because if we're going to win this in the most disrespectful way possible, we're going to fucking do it properly and we're going to win this shit by a landslide. All right. So get on there, fucking vote. The link is on my Twitter. I'm looking on their website, actually. Can you even fucking find it on their website? Let me just have a look. No. Home? No. It just has a bunch of fucking things about entering the awards, and the deadline is already fucking over. Oh, no, you can still enter. Why the fuck can you still enter? They've they've opened. The entry deadline is next month. I think this is just a scam to make... Because you have to pay to enter. I think this is just a scam to make as much money as possible out of fucking idiots who think this award means something. But you know what? If I get a physical trophy, I'm putting it behind me right there. (laughs) I'll fly up to the award ceremony. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) So, yeah. Vote for me. I want a 1,000 votes. That's what we're going for. I've only got a 150. If you're listening to this, chances are you haven't voted. Get off your fucking ass, you lazy dog. This is free. Go and vote. It'll be a good fucking meme. And we'll have a good story after it as well. All right? So, talking to the future winner of the popular vote. Man, I'm loving life at the moment. Welcome to... What is this? This is the... uh, 
What is, what are we? We're at uh, 11th of January. We just hit our first million views of the year. Uh, the fired sketch just just ticked over a million this morning. Thank you very much. That's fucking cool. That is such a good start to the year. And uh, man, all of the videos I've been putting out recently have been going fucking crazy good, which is great. The Supreme Patty one, I think, is almost at 300,000 views. <clears throat> uh, a bunch of the other ones have hit over a hundred. Uh, as well, and uh, a whole bunch of old videos are actually going crazy as well. Yeah, so Supreme Patty, we're at uh, almost 300,000. The new names one is at 130. Uh, pretty much every Lure review is passing 50,000 within the first couple of days of upload, which is awesome because um, the channel's slowly coming back to life, and each video I put out gets more views than the last one, which is fucking sick. Although, you know what? That uh, What's interesting is the YouTube algorithm, man, it is so fucking clear. That shit is obviously only showing you what it thinks you want to see. So as a little experiment, I put up... Uh, I want to start putting... To promote this podcast, I want to start putting up... Uh, monthly podcast clips, like the best bits from the podcast once a month. By the way, if I say something particularly hilarious that you think could go on the main channel, let me know because as soon as I record these things, I fucking forget. And then I talk to the editor, Keel, and he goes, so what were the best bits from the podcast? I'm like, why the fuck would I know? I wasn't there. (laughs) Even though I fucking recorded things. As soon as I hit that button, it's gone out of my brain. And you guys can do it. So if I do say something particularly funny, it's always good leaving it in the comments or tweeting me or something because uh, I forget. Um, And yeah, so as a little experiment, I put up the uh, Harry Potter thing, which I thought was very funny. That's probably the funniest thing I've done for a while on the podcast. Um, And uh, I put it up and I titled it, uh, Pottermore has ruined Harry Potter. And then I dashed it uh, Spear Sunday's podcast clip, right? I put that little thing there so people knew that it wasn't like a uh, a lure review or something. Now, YouTube obviously saw the algorithm or whatever the fuck saw the podcast clip part and it's gone, oh, it literally said to me, it got way less views than the, than the last four videos, which doesn't make sense, right? And it says, oh, this video is getting less views because it's not something that your audience normally watches. And I'm like, they fucking subscribe to me. They want to watch my shit. That doesn't make any sense. So I tried something. It, w- it was on like, um, oh, this is crazy. So it was on like 12,000 views in the first couple of hours, which doesn't make sense for me. Normally I hit 30 to 40, right? And I'm like, well, that doesn't fucking make any sense. It was performing... Uh, the eighth less, least popular, right? So out of the last 10, it was sitting at number eight. So not very good. So I'm like, well, that doesn't make any fucking sense because it's a good video. It's well edited. It's about something current and trending. And I know it's very funny from the comments. People are going, dude, this is really good. So I'm like, well, why the fuck isn't YouTube showing it to people then? So what I did is I edited the title and I took the Speared Sunnies podcast clip out of the title and I called it just... Pottermore has ruined Harry Potter, took the podcast out of it. And then the views started jumping up because the YouTube algorithm is like, oh, well, this isn't a podcast thing anymore. It's a normal video. We'll start showing it to people. And the views went from like 12,000 to it's, I'm looking at it since I did it. I did it last night. Now it's at almost over 20,000 views and it's fucking crazy. And that's just the title. It's so crazy how much YouTube is controlling what you guys see by, based on what it thinks you want to watch. And clearly, from judging from the comments, it is wrong. Because all the comments are like, this is fucking great. Not, I'm getting no negative comments or anything like that. Everyone's saying that it's really, really good, just like a normal video. But because the title was different, YouTube assumes that it's a shit video that you guys don't want to watch. It's very frustrating, but... I guess that's the game. I guess that's what I need to start doing is just start fucking... That's literally, if you don't use clickbait thumbnails and the title, your shit doesn't get views at all. So <clears throat> that's what I'm going to start doing. Uh, so bear with me, guys. I'm trying to work out this this algorithm shit. I think, I've, I think I've got a handle on it. But yeah, I think the podcast clips in future, they won't be listed as podcast clips. They'll just have regular names but whatever let me also let me know i'm looking for some feedback on the um 
on the editing of it. Because with the podcast clips, I want, obviously, to use it to promote this thing. And I want it to be, like, the most engaging editing and funny and entertaining as possible. So I tried to add in a shitload of editing, zooms and text and and uh, even video footage that you wouldn't see on the podcast normally, like Harry Potter clips and shit. So I would love some feedback on what you guys liked about it, what you didn't like about it, because it's something that I'll start doing once a month uh on the main channel just to promote this thing and get more fucking pathetic losers in here. All right, you guys have a good week. I've had, I had a good week, man. Uh, very productive. I got out. We're, we're in the uh, the year of content, man. What is this? The third or the fourth week of two videos uh, a week? It's going well. I'm not, I'm not committing to doing two videos a week, but I am going to try. And you know what? Dude, I've already got Tuesday's video filmed. Uh, which is a fucking awesome one on DJ Khaled, and uh, I'm going to film another one with Luke. He's actually coming. He's on his way here. He might fucking burst in while I'm doing this thing. Uh, have, having a good week, man. I mean, you know what? I'm enjoying my life on jacket money. I'm finally not destitute poor. It's the fucking best, dude. It's the fucking best. I'm not I'm not rolling in it, but I have every, every week, I've got money left over. 50 bucks left over, 100 bucks left over that I just don't spend. It's great the fucking best shit ever and it's making me save too the other day yesterday i went around i just did a bit of shopping i wanted a i wanted to buy a um a long sleeve polo and i got it and i'm wearing it now and uh i'm really happy with it but i can't decide whether i look like a really productive member of society or like a, a cocaine dealer i mean you can be both can't you they serve a purpose you know funding mexican drug cartels and that blow up airliners you know that's a service <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, if there wasn't a Mexican drug cartel, what the fuck would Netflix do? You know, they'd lose that their stock would plummet. If tomorrow the entire Mexican cocaine drug trade just shut down, Nef I Netflix stock, I if I had it, I'd sell that shit, you know? I'd be like, oh shit, they're not going to be able to make season 25 of Narcos. Get rid of the stock. It's tanking. You know, I'd go over there and start up my own cocaine trade and then sell the documentary rights to Netflix. That's how you really make money, dude. It's fucking crazy how much money Netflix makes. So you know that that Bird Box movie that came out, right, that everyone was tweeting about? I saw Netflix said that in the first week of putting that on Netflix, 45 million people watched it. So... Let's say that, that's only the first week, right? Let's say that, that at a conservative estimate, 45 million people is half of their audience, which is, it's clearly, it, it'd probably be like, I don't know, 10 times that, that their actual users. Off 45 million people, the rate that I'm paying for Netflix, they're making like almost a billion dollars a month, just off those 45 million. And you know there's more, way more. They're making a billion dollars a month. That's like fucking $12 billion a year, and it's got to be at least three times that, maybe even 10, right? Because you know there's so many fucking people that didn't watch Bird Box in the first week. I didn't, you know? That's my fucking $13 that Netflix is getting that they didn't just account for. They're making like $12 billion a year minimum. Fucking crazy. No wonder they can make so much stand-up comedy. Hey, Netflix, where's my check? <laughs> it's crazy, man. Um, what else has been happening this week? Ah, where are my fucking notes here? Um, man, I drove past this business. I drove past this fucking... <laughs> this fucking, like, uh, nut shop, right? They're selling nuts, peanuts, almonds, wal Walmarts? Walmarts! Walnuts, fucking idiot. Walmarts, right? And the, and the place... <laughs> The sign was called Nut Smart. Like giant letters, Nut Smart. And I, every time I see it now, I can't help but thinking of like, I don't know, Albert Einstein coming. <laughs> like every time I see that fucking Nut Smart sign, I look at it and I just think of some dude going, oh, six times six is 36. <laughs> just fuck some incredibly smart dude nutting. Like Stephen Hawking doing a big nut. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm coming. Well, actually, he's dead. Oh, but his fucking text-to-speech machine probably still works. <laughs> you know, Dude, you know, if I was Stephen Hawking, you know what I would do? If I was that guy, I would fucking... 
for sure. I would, this is what I would do. I would, at my, at my before I, because you know you're going to die, right? I would write a speech for my funeral and I would program it into my text-to-speech chair and then I would, I would, do, I would do my own eulogy. I, my, well, my chair would. I, I'd be dead. But my chair would get up there, and you'd put the microphone, you plug it into the chair. You get a sound guy to rig it up. You could even put put some reverb on it, so it sounds like it's coming from I don't know space. You know, from the afterlife. And I'd be like, "Welcome, welcome, welcome to 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 my 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 funeral, funeral, funeral." It'd be the best shit ever. Why the fuck, that guy with all of his brains and all of his money, why did his text-to-speech machine sound like a robot? Why didn't he, like... If I had that money, and I had and I was that smart, I would fucking build my own system, and I would pay Morgan Freeman, and I would have Morgan Freeman's voice. That'd be the best shit. Could you imagine doing calculus in Morgan Freeman's voice? You know how much more famous Stephen Hawking would be if he had Morgan Freeman as his text-to-speech device? That dude would be so famous and so well-liked, they probably would have worked out a way to cure his disease and he would live forever. I'm sorry to break it to you, but the only reason that Morgan Freeman... Sorry, the only reason... I'm sorry to break it to you. The only reason that Stephen Hawking is dead is because he doesn't have Morgan Freeman's voice. That's why. Cause of death, not having Morgan Freeman's voice. So Morgan Freeman, he might live forever. Dude, you ever think about that? How many fucking people you like are going to die in your lifetime? Morgan Freeman, bam, he's going to die. I'm going to remember it. Stan Lee, we already lost that legend. You know? A couple of you cunts listen to this. If you what? I don't know, 14, 15? Might be me. I mean, 10 years before, after you, before you. Or maybe before you, maybe I'll kill you. <laughs> maybe that's the way you go. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's the way we all go. I would just work out how to kill everyone. Guys, bit of a podcast where I haven't done anything this week. I'm sorry to tell you. But at least I do look like a cocaine dealer. That's for sure. This place, man, I'm at, the, I'm at this warehouse. I've been, I've, been, uh, I've been staying here most nights till like 9 or 10 p.m. And it's, it's really annoying... Because the alarm system's fucked, right? I think everyone's alarm works properly except for mine. So every time I... if After 5 p.m., the alarms are armed. And then if I go out my door, the alarms just go off. And I don't have a toilet in here. I got to go outside, around, and then into the toilet. I have a key for it. So every time after fucking 5 p.m., if I need to piss, I need to leave, the alarms go off, the fucking guard dogs across the road start losing their minds... Uh, and then often I have to run from, because I can't figure out how to set my fucking alarm. I don't think it works properly. So I, what I have to do is I have to leave the warehouse. The alarm goes off. It's really loud. It lights up the whole street. And I have to run up the street, get to the bathroom, and then scan my pass at that uh, fucking thing. And then the alarm turns off. So every time I need to piss when it's like 7 p.m., when it's starting to get dark, it looks like I've just robbed the place and I'm fucking running up the street. I'm just waiting for someone to like jump out and tackle me because the alarm goes off and I just fucking run so I can so I can stop it. But now what I've started to do is I've worked out that when I leave my ha- when I leave my warehouse, I've got about a minute before the alarm goes off, right? So when it's after when it's when it's after dark, I hold in my ways, right? I pissed in a bottle once. I'm not doing it again. I hated it. I felt like a fucking homeless cunt, right? So what I do now is I wait till it's after dark. I leave the warehouse. I got a minute. I start counting down in my head. It's like Mission Impossible. Dun 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 dun. I get out the gate. Dun 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 dun. Walk down the street. Dun 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 dun. I get to the tree. Dun dun dun. And then I pull out my dick. And it's, <laughs> and it's like, dude, the moment, the moment the sun goes down, the dicks come out. And I just, I do a nature wee. Do you know how good a nature wee is? Ladies, you wouldn't understand. You guys got to get yourself a she wee. You seen those she wee things? It's like a funnel for your puss. And you just, you chuck it on your puss. It looks like those, uh, those, those weird, those weird creepy, uh, those, you know, those fetish suction cup things where they just get this giant fucking toilet plunger of a thing. They hook it up to a vacuum and they just suck your pussy. I don't get it. I don't understand that thing. 
Who wants to? Who wants to? Who wants to see like a, a like a sixty kilo coked out porn star with a really obese pussy? I don't. Because that's the thing, right? That's the thing with all these with all these fucking fetish pornos. I love looking at them. I love finding out. I, 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 for some reason, I, there's two, there's two things I love in life, right? It's like one, it's. it's <laughs> <laughs> One, it's finding out about all of the weird fucking fetishes there are. And two, confirming without a shadow of doubt in my mind that I don't share that fucking weird fetish. <laughs> you know, do you ever, you ever do that? You ever go to the weird part of Pornhub? There's like, there's the weird part of YouTube. That's weird. But the weird part of Pornhub, bro, that's next level. You seen those like suction cup pussy things? You see all those midgets, all that foot fetish shit. I don't get the foot stuff. Or the granny stuff. And here's the thing, right? With all those fucking all those all those and also those those crazy violent bondage stuff. That I hate that. That freaks me out. That's some like I hate women shit. I don't like that stuff. But but what I <laughs> what I sympathize with, right? Is the more fucked up the fetish, the more fucked up the porn star that has to do it. Because there's no, you know, you know, who's a, you know, Lisa Ann, she's not getting pissed on. <laughs> she's got some class, you know. She'll do an interracial gangbang, but she's not getting pissed on. That's reserved for like the three out of tens, you know, who they can't do anything else. It's like, it's like all of the, yes. Crazy fetish porno sites is reserved exclusively for sixes, you know, and you gotta feel sorry for a six, and not the not the girl next door six. There's like there's there's a couple sixes that are like a listers, you know, because they got that girl next door could have gone to high school with her. She could be a neighbor. She could be a coworker. Kind of looks like every girl, sweet little girl, until you log on Pornhub. You know, that's a vibe. I can appreciate that. But then there's like, you know. The other side of the six, you know, just the, ah, almost pretty. Or like amazing face, two different size tits. <laughs> yeah, dude, that is the hallmark of every fucking crazy fetish porn in the world is whoever the poor woman with a bad father in that fucking video. She's got two diff. She's got two different chicks tits. Like one of them is hers, and then one of them is like a Japanese woman. <laughs> she's got she's got one respectable C cup, and then somehow God fucked it and gave her a Japanese woman's A cup. <laughs> and now she's like, oh, I wanted to be a porn star. I wanted to just do anal scenes for like a hundred grand, but now I got to get pissed on for thirty bucks. <laughs> it's <laughs> every every chick getting pissed on in a porno has a Frankenstein body just of different pieces different body parts you know she's got fucking she's got like one normal tooth and 65 fucking weird ones she's got a, a regular C cup breast and a Japanese woman's A cup the poor women woman she's got weird really weird dark elbows and like that wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for the two lopsided tits and you can't really hate her for the tits because it's not her fault, but at least you can think, dude, sort your elbows out. Get some laser moisturized. I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> Why am I talking about this? Oh, yeah. How did I get from here to fucking weird fetishes? I don't know. I don't know where I am. Anyway, I love a nature wee. I love pissing outside, dude. It's the best. You girls go, oh, that's right. She wees and then suction cup vaginas. I don't know how I got over there. My brain's fucked. I'm saying... You guys gotta... Nature Wee doesn't hurt anyone. I don't know why it's illegal. I know why it's illegal in public, in like a city, because you piss on the ground and then it just stays there forever. But like, if you piss on a tree, man, that's like peaceful. That's some peaceful shit. Fuck meditating. Go outside when it's dark and just piss on a tree. And the best, dude, the best, when it's cold, right? And you just get a chilly wiener. <laughs> That's when it's good. That's when you really like that shit. That's when it's real refreshing. You're like, woo! Woo! Got a cold penis. That's the best shit. So now it's like my motto. When the sun goes down, the dicks come out. Isn't that a song? When the sun goes down, the dicks come out. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. The sun goes down, the dick.
dicks come out. I fucking love to piss on a tree. The sun goes down. The dicks. Oh, now I've changed the song. What's that song? The sun goes down. The dicks come. What's that song? In the end, the sun goes down. The dicks come out. In the end, I'm pissing outside. <laughs> That's what that's what I really want. I feel like since I put that video up, there's going to be a lot of new people listening to this podcast and they're going to come here and it's just going to be me singing about pissing outside. And really, I think that's the first that's the best first impression you could ever get. <laughs> Tickets for episode 150 go on sale on Tuesday and voting for the Australian Podcast Awards are are open now. So go and get that. Man, I went to... Uh, I, forgot, I forgot to talk about this, actually. I went to a New Year's party with my girl and her friends. And, uh, dude, it was fucking funny. There was this guy there, right? It was kind of two parties. So it was kind of two parties. So it was like my girl and her friends. And then her friend whose house it was had a, had a younger sister by a couple of years. So it was two different friend groups. Friend group one, my group, we were staying at the house the whole night. Friend group two, the younger sister, they were staying at the house for pre-drinks and then they were going to another party or somewhere else. I don't really know, right? We were kind of separate, kind of together for the time being. And there was this one dude, part of group B. Group, group A was me, my girl, And then like four of her female friends. So I was the only guy, right? So I was loving it. It was the best. It was wild. So good. I'm surprised I made it back home alive, if you know what I mean. (laughs) I was a bloody loose one, right? So it was that. Group A was mine. Group B, pretty similar. There was only two guys. Well, no, there's only... Actually, there was actually... Now there was a few guys on the left, and it ended up being like one guy and then four girls. And one guy, he fucked up. And I saw what he was trying to do, but he fucked up. So when we got there, before we got there, we were all told there's a spa. There's a spa there. It was a hot night, and it was a heated spa, so it would be kind of good. So when, you know, when it got a little bit cold, when the sun went down, the dicks come out. You jump in the spa, but you, but when the sun goes down, there's only one dick. The sun goes down, five pusses come out, suction cups on all of the threes. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So there was a spa and we, everyone knew that everyone bought, bra- everyone bought bathers, but everyone kind of got there with like, ah, oh, maybe, you know, mm, maybe. And here's the thing. He was a single dude and there was, and there was a lot of single girls in the, in, in friendship group B friendship group A, we were just kind of watching, talking, playing some board games and, uh, he fucked up, man. I saw. Okay. So here's what he was trying to do. He wanted, cause he was the only guy there. And I thought this, right? Everyone, if you were the only dude with four girls and there's a spa, you know, optimum, optimum scenario, everyone in the spa, you're the only dude. Oh, the dream. I've never done that. Have you ever done that? No, the dream. But every girl knows that that's our optimum plan. Every girl knows we have that in our head and every girl is going to do her best to make sure that doesn't fucking happen because fuck that James Bond movie scene that ends with someone getting fingered. You know, they know. They're not fucking stupid, right? And the only time that scenario could ever happen is if it was the girl's idea first. I knew that. He fucking didn't. He tried to force it, man. So, it's New Year's. They probably leaving at like 11 to get to the next party before midnight, right? He jumps the gun. (laughs) This dude got in the spa by himself first. First one in the spa. Not at nine. Not at ten. 
7.30. (laughs) He got in at 7.30. No one was drunk. No one was buzzing. No other girls wanted to get in. He got in, sat in the spa. He just went all in, dude. He 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 was like all in. Put all his fucking chips in. He thought he had a royal flush. He thought if he got in the spa first... Pretty soon, it would be four chicks in the spa and he'd just be sitting there with his arm around two of them like fucking Dan Bilzerian, except way less Jack. That's what he thought was going to happen. He got in at 7.30 and you know what? You know what happened? You know what happened. He sat there until fucking 10 by himself. <laughs> and, he was, and he was like... And dude, it was so funny. And because we were we were a separate group, me and we were a couple of years older, so we knew what we, what he was trying to do. He made a rookie error. All he had to do was wait an hour, and for one girl to go in, then two would go in, and then and then three would go in. If he goes in, the last girl has to get into. Boom, he's fucking James Bond. But he fucked it from the get-go. Gets in at 7.30 by himself, sits there with his arms stretched out, looking like a fucking... Like, looking like a fucking old, like, 50-year-old Greek plasterer just after a hard day's work, just sitting there by himself while his wife's in the kitchen. And he's like, ah, I fucking hate that bitch, but I love this spa. That's what he looked like. And he was just saying shit like, Oh, gee, the spa's good. (laughs) The jets are good. Oh, the temperature's great. This is amazing. Please come in. I'm so lonely. No one's hanging around me. No one wants to talk to me. And all the girls just hanging out with, with each other. And then one girl felt sorry for him. And he and I saw he, she was like I'm gonna get in the spa and I saw his eyes light up he's like oh fuck this by the by the way it had been fucking two hours it was now nine thirty the dude's been in there for two hours he fucking went all in he would have been he he would have looked like a nutsack just all wrinkled and shit he boiled himself dude it was hot you can't sit in a spa for two hours like a heated spa you're gonna cook yourself and he almost fucking did right I'll tell you later. So anyway, this other chick, she goes and changes. And he's like, fuck yeah, we're on here. It's working. Two hours of hard work has finally paid off. I went all in and I'm about to hit the jackpot. Anyway, she comes back. And she comes back in her one piece wrapped in a towel. And I was like, oh no, it's not going to happen for you. I already see what she's going to do before he does. <clears throat> She comes in wrapped in a towel. Now, if you're if, if there's a spa and a girl comes out of the fucking change rooms in her bikini or whatever she's wearing, but she's wrapped herself in a towel, she's not getting in. That's that is a foot soaking outfit. <laughs> but he doesn't know. He's like, oh come on, sit in the spa. It's lovely. The two other girls, they have not changed. It's just one chick who felt sorry for him. And she, just like I thought, sits on the ledge, wrapped in the towel. Puts her fucking shins in the spa and she sits there while he tries to coax her into the spa so the other two chicks will get into. She sits there for an hour while he sits there in his fucking board shorts cooking. <laughs> and then the other two girls, they stand around the spa. Dude, he fucked it so hard for himself. All he had to do was wait for one girl to get in the spa. That was, that was all it would have taken. But no girl is going to get into a spa with one singular single dude. Because they fucking know. He fucked it. He fucked it. And I, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed my New Year's watching this dude shoot himself in the foot, sitting in a spa that was way too hot after like 30 minutes. And he was so uncomfortable, but so fucking committed because he also knew he couldn't get out. Because you know the moment he got out, that's when all three of the other girls would get in and he would look like a fucking creeper getting out, changing, seeing the girls in the in the spa and then changing and then getting back in. So he just went all in and I admire his commitment, but he fucked it so hard for himself. Poor bastard. At one point, 
After like two hours of being in that spa, he had to get out and he got one of the girls to spray him with the garden hose because he was so hot. He fucking overheated himself, got it, got it to spray him with cold water at fucking 10 p.m. at night. And then, and then he gets back in the spa and no one followed. And the most action he got all night was that girl's wet shins. And very dry vagina. <laughs> oh, rest in peace, fallen soldier. A valiant effort, my son, but you fucked it. <laughs> you guys hear about that... Uh, uh, this is a little bit old, but you guys hear about fucking 21 Savage? How we got in cheap... 21 Savage just put out an album, It's a Knife. 21 Savage, that guy, It's a Knife. You know that dude? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight M's in my bank account. M's in my bank account. Every time I heard that song, I would count along with him and just change the last bit. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dollars in my bank account. <laughs> dollars in my bank account. He got in trouble recently. He put out an album and it, he got in trouble for the fucking dumbest reason. He had a line in there talking about, you know, getting heaps of money as rappers do. You know, that's the fucking genre. And he says something along the lines of, yeah, I'm getting Jewish money. As in, I'm getting a lot of money. As in, Jewish people have a lot of money. And he got in trouble. Twitter wrote, railed against him for it. Saying that it was a stereotype. And he shouldn't say it. And he had to fucking apologize. And he came out and he literally said something like, Oh, in my mind, I've always thought the Jewish community and the Jewish culture was something to aspire to because they all, or on the whole, their whole culture is about being financially successful and financially independent and they assist each other. And I think that's a great thing. And I think that African-Americans should aspire to that as well. I'm sorry if anyone was offended by that. And then these other rappers came out was, and these other rapper, Meek Mill came out and was like, dude, every wealthy person I know, mega, mega rich. And you know, if Meek Mill's calling someone rich, they're fucking loaded. They're like Illuminati rich. He's like, dude, every successful person I know in the music industry who is not an artist is Jewish. I think that's fucking awesome. That's very obvious and apparent. I think it's great. And I think that we should all aspire to be that successful. Fuck yeah. Go Jews. You're making money. Good on you. And it's like, that's... <laughs> Why the fuck can you get in trouble for saying that Jewish people have a lot of money? That doesn't make any sense. It's like, have you been to a Jewish area? Have you seen the cars? The minute you go from a, from a regular area to like a Jewish area, you start seeing BMWs, Jeeps, fucking Range Rovers, two-story mansions, pools, expensive stores, jewelry stores. They're killing it, dude. <clears throat> it's like they're fucking kill Have you, have you, honestly, have you ever met like a broke Jew? I haven't. I don't think I have. I don't know if they're allowed to be, or if, or if, or or if they don't have any money, they've got the fucking business. Something about the Jewish culture gives them that business hustle. Like there's one, there's one particular Jewish comedian I know that's fucking killing it with the on the business side of comedy and selling out shows and marketing himself properly and just fucking destroying it. He's applied like the Jewish business hustle to the comedy business and he's killing it. I don't know. Is that it? It's fucking the, to the the point that we've gotten to where you can't compliment another community and point out something that's obvious and complimentary. You can't do that anymore. It's fucking crazy. <clears throat> oh, I don't know why I say you can't do it. You can do it, but a bunch of fucking morons on Twitter will get angry about it, and you have to apologize for some reason. Like there's a, like like there's a massive fucking a, a social justice Jewish fan base that Twenty One Savage has that he didn't know about. He's like, whoa, fuck. I don't know. So fucking strange that cunts get mad about that stuff. 
It's like, hey, why don't we get angry at, anger at the, the people who are like hating Jewish people for being successful? Why don't we get angry at those people? You know, Nazis? Why don't we hate on those actual fucking people rather than cunts complimenting the Jewish culture of success in music as something to aspire to? Fucking ridiculous. I'm going to have to apologize for this in a minute. <laughs> Um, okay, shall we do a uh, miscellaneous bit at the end? <clears throat> if you are new to the podcast or you don't know uh, because you're an idiot, uh, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer uh, questions, life advice, or anything else like that um, that you may have if I think I can make it interesting. Fucking updates. Fuck off. Why can't you just... Oh my God. Why can't you just get rid of these fucking updates? I don't want one. My computer works. It works works. I don't need a fucking update. Um, uh, if you have uh, a question or you have a story you think I would find entertaining, uh, send it to podcast at com. The amount of fucking idiots. That's an email. Podcast at com. Is that not obvious? The amount of fucking morons I get messaging me no shit every week. Hey man, what's the podcast email? I have said the podcast email in every single miscellaneous bit of the end segment for the last literally hundred episodes. More. No, every fucking episode I say it because I want emails. What do you think I'm going, hey, email the podcast. The email's a secret. Fucking have a guess. Work it out. What I don't get is these fucking idiots know that there's an email segment. If they've heard the segment, they know. They've, they've heard me say the fucking email a million times. Podcast at loosebeers.com. You know what? If you're that fucking stupid, you don't deserve. You don't deserve to email the podcast. What's the podcast email? Gee, I've got no fucking idea. <clears throat> All right. I love this. I love this subject line. Here we go. Um, oh my god, girls, so frustrating. I got this. I got a great question, and then she sends me a follow up email. This is such. This is such a girl thing to do. So such a girl thing, right? I get this email. A great email that I would love to read out about a dilemma between friends and relationships and shit. I get an email at 5.34 and it's this fucking great email about a specific social interaction from a girl. And then at... So I get the email at 5.34 with this huge dilemma and then at 6.26, 50 minutes, almost exactly 50 minutes later, I get another email. Hey, Lewis. Please ignore the previous email. I was overthinking unnecessarily. I don't want this in the podcast and I've made my own decision. Oh my God. <laughs> That's such a fucking girl thing to do. Help me. Help me. I'm freaking out. Oh, emotions. Amazing. Keep it up, man. I won't read it out. I won't betray her trust. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. My best friend seems to hate me because I'm friends with his girlfriend. G'day, you cunt. My name is Grognek the Destroyer. No, it's not. It's fucking Greg. I'm not calling you that. My name is Greg, and I think uh, I have a good story to tell. About one month ago, my best mate seems to be... seems uh, About one month ago now, my, my best mate started to get pissed at me, or at least he seems to, because I'm friends with his girlfriend. Oh. This first started when I got a random text from him. He said that I should stop hitting on his girlfriend. What? This is written weird. He says that I should stop hitting his girlfriend, even though I don't touch her. What? Do you mean hitting on his girlfriend or hitting his girlfriend, even though I don't touch her? Hitting on his girlfriend? Maybe hitting on his girlfriend is what you're trying to say weird i just replied with i'm not sure what you're talking about but sure and let it be a week later i got a text from him saying that if i don't lay off his girlfriend he will get the school involved i showed this to his girlfriend and she yelled at him he hasn't talked to me since then please help if you can thanks cunt hey dude 
hey, how about you write an email that's coherent and I'll help you out, all right? I'm uh, sorry, I'm not answering this question because it sucks. You had a great headline and I know this is a good story, but you've written it in fucking a giant paragraph. It's like one sentence. It doesn't make sense. Hey, Greg, proofread your email, revise it, rewrite it, and send it again. I want this story in three paragraphs and I want each paragraph to have at least three sentences. I want you to proofread this shit, get someone else to read it before you send it in and then resend that shit and I'll read it out next episode. All right, Greg? Because this sucks and you've ruined the potential that you have with a great story. All right? I'm sorry. You're a fucking idiot. Resend this shit. I'm not grading your work until I get it sent in properly meeting the specific requirements of your assignment, all right? That's Professor Lewis signing off. Not reading that one. Send it in again. Next question. Oh, this is good. Three paragraphs. My favorite. I cucked my best friend's dad. (laughs) Three paragraphs, succinct headline, sentences, full stops. I love this. Haven't read it yet. I might... I might hate this, but but from first glance, I like it much better than whatever fucking Greg wrote. All right. Hey, Lou, boy, have I got a shit show of a story for you. Call me Dick because that's pretty much what I am. <clears throat> a bit of backstory. I've been best friends with Chad since primary school. Chad's mum is hot as fuck. Probably helped by the fact that she's a fitness freak with fake tits. Ooh, I would be friends with Chad too. What's his number? Hook me up. Needless to say, going over to Chad's house was always a memorable experience. Oh, the poor cunt. I always felt so sorry. There was always one kid at high school with a hot as fuck mum. You remember? I remember we had one guy and she, his mum was fucking gorgeous. It would have been... Would have been 10 years ago now, and I bet I would, I'd still do it. You know what I mean? Like, you know she's still like a fucking nine. And, and, that poor, and, and the thing with the, the hot mums is they know. They know they've got a hot mum. They've seen a woman. They've seen their friend's mums. You know, you know when you go over to, the, go over to your, your friend's house and he's got a fat mum? And you're like, ah, you've got the fat mum. I had the cool mum. I had the cool mom that wore weird shit. Everyone always told me that I I, I I had cool parents. They're not very cool, but they were cool. They looked cool to other people. Mom always wears bangles and bandanas and weird shit. That's where I get the weird fashion from. She's always wearing weird shit. Dad has dreadlocks and he wears he likes wearing beads and singlets and, and shit like that. So I got like the cool parents. That was my lane. And I knew that because I saw fucking the boring parents that worked in an office job. And they dressed in, in like <laughs> business casual on a Sunday. I saw the boring parents. I saw the hot, I saw the fat mum. And then my mate. Oh, hot mum. I remember. And I loved going to his house. <laughs> I'm not going to name him because you'll probably hear this and then I'll never be able to hang out with him again. <clears throat> All right. Uh... She was really hot. She was a fitness freak with fake tits. So needless to say, going over to chat, you, dude, you ever see like a, you ever, you, I think this all the time. You ever like walk around in public and you see like a new mom and she's got like a, like a four year old with her and you check out the mom and you go, fuck. And then you see the kid and you think, ah, fuck, ah, fuck, ah. Why does that happen? But it seems to be the opposite for girls. Whenever you see like a, whenever there's like a hot dad, girls see them with the sun and they go, mm. and then they see the sun and they go, ooh. Whereas I see a hot mom and I'm like, damn, oh, damn, oh. But girls go, damn, ooh. Like they see the child and that, that adds points. It's like fuck taking a puppy to a to, fuck taking a puppy to the dog park. Take a kid, take a fucking toddler, kidnap a child for half an hour. You know, if it's non-verbal, he won't re- he won't remember it. Just jump over in the backyard, grab someone's toddler, take him to the park, pick up, fuck a couple girls, drop them off. No harm, no foul. <laughs> 
Damn. Damn. Oh. Damn. Ooh. I don't know why that's different. But yeah, you ever see a hot mom with like a three-year-old? And, and I always think this. I, I, I always just in my mind, I just, I just like, you know, in, in a world where there's no consequences, you, I would just love to like be like, hey, Timmy, I would fuck your mom, and then you just walk away. You don't even talk to her. Like, hey, little Timmy, we've never met before. I don't know your mom, but I saw her in the street, and I want you to know that I would f- fuck her if given the opportunity. And then you just walk away and little Timmy has to walk, walk you know, that, that could be a defining moment of his childhood. He'll remember that for the, for the rest of, you know, shit you remember, you can't know, you don't really know why. That's what he would remember. Some fucking giant, just giant, some giant stranger in the city bending down and be like, hey, little Timmy, I would fuck your mum. But you're in the picture, so I won't. And then just leave, walk into a bookstore. <laughs> <coughs> Um, uh, she was, she had, she was a fitness freak and had fake tits. Uh, needless to say, going over to Chad's house was always a memorable experience. As we were best friends and we lived in the same suburb, I spent a lot of time at Chad's house and subsequently with his mum too. Mm. Of course, I never told Chad about how hot his mum was because that would be a weird conversation to have. Really? You never told him? I love telling them. I love, I'm, I, you know what? I'm a big cunt. I love telling people when they had a hot mom. Like, you know your mom's really hot? Shut up. She is, dude. She's fucking hot as fuck off. But they don't say that, that they don't say she's not because you back them into a corner. Right? You, you know you got a hot mom. Fuck off. What, you saying she's ugly? Well, no, I, no, my mom's not ugly. Whoa. I reckon she's hot. What, fuck off. Don't you think she's hot? No. But you don't think she's ugly? I I would just fuck with people's heads, get them to walk around, walk them in a conversation circle, like walk them into a conversation maze, take them by the hand, take lead them to the exit. Little day do they know the exit is them admitting that they have a hot mum, and then you go, ah, you want to fuck your mum, and then hey, for some reason they don't want to be friends with you anymore. Because <clears throat> not only do you want to fuck their mum, you're also a cunt. Um. I never told Chad how hot his mum was because that would be a weird conversation to have and I'm pretty sure he's kind of embarrassed by her sometimes. Yeah, you know why? Because he fucking knows because he sees your eyes when she comes in and she offers you a glass of water. Would you boys like a glass of water? You see, he sees your eyes go, no thank you, Mrs. Thompson and then and then dart down to her fake tits. No thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Oh man. And then back up. To, he sees that. But he can't hate you for it because he knows. Everything has been normal with her up until very recently. A few months ago, his mum started to seem to want to spend more time with me, such as asking for help with household stuff like gardening and cooking. She also began asking me if I had a girlfriend, I don't, and other personal questions. Oh, she's fucking busting out the the Vibro Rabbit 9000 thinking about his son's friends. Oh, no. The question slowly became more personal. <clears throat> and I found out she's very open about sex and would even ask me about what positions and fetishes I liked. Oh, dude. Okay. If you're, she's not open, she wants to fuck, bro. That's not being open. You should never, ever talk about sex with your children's friends. This girl wants you to bust it open, man. Fetishes I liked. Obviously, it wasn't difficult to see the hints and it wasn't long before she straight up asked for sex. I should read the email before making predictions. It was a little... Although I do feel like a fucking genius when I say, oh, this is going to happen and then it does. I'm like, nah, fuck yeah. <clears throat> it was a little weird given she's my best friend's mum, but fuck it, a horny 19-year-old never turns down free pussy. I like that motto. We began fucking often. Usually whenever we both had time and when no one would catch us. Everything had been hunky-dory until just a couple of days ago. After we had sex, she convinced, she confessed and told me that ever since we've started fucking, she's been recording us. No. No. Oh, no. 
Ever since we started fucking, she's been recording us using a camera hidden in the room. <gasps> Turns out her husband is a cuck who likes to see other men dick his wife. And in fact, it was his idea from the start. Oh, no. That we should start having sex. Bro. That explains why her behavior started, by why her behavior changed so suddenly. But if you thought fucking my best friend's mum and cucking her dad was bad, it gets worse. She told me that her husband wants to watch in person next time and for her to humiliate him while we have sex. I, t- <laughs> oh, I told her I would think about it for now. Oh, man. <laughs> Dude. What the fuck should I do, Lewis? I'm a cunt, but I don't know if I'm that much of a cunt. Although it would make good for a fucking story for the podcast. Sorry if this was long, but have a fantastically shit one, you cunt. Dude, there's no way I'm going to have a worse one than you. Okay, first of all, let's unpack this. First of all, uh, she's illegally recorded you having sex without your consent. That's fucked. Second of all, <laughs> that's that's her, her son's friend. And both the husband and wife are in on it. Oh, man, that's fucked. So, I mean, you've, dude, you've taken over the whole family. You own the family. You've got to change your surname. No, they need to change their surname to your surname because you got two out of three. <laughs> <You've>, <laughs> if, dude, if the husband joins in, I mean, that's sex, isn't it? If he's just watching, that's kind of, you're kind of fucking him. He's involved in the sex. So you've had your... So you fucked two out of three members of the family. You're going to have to go for the trifecta. I think you need to fuck your mate. You need to fuck your mate. And and all of them need to change their surname to your surname. And you need to take over the family. You're the fucking alpha of the family, dude. What's this guy... What is it? What is your mate going to do if he gets angry? He can't get angry. What is he going to do? Punch you? He can't. You're his dad now. You've taken over the family. The previous alpha, the previous figurehead of the family has capitulated his kingdom and given his wife to you. You're a dad now. You're a fucking dad. You're you're your mate's dad. You've taken his dad's wife. You've taken over the household. She wants to fuck you. He wants to watch. You're the alpha of the family, bro. That's your family. You, can be, you better get a job. You've got a mortgage. You've got kids to feed. You just got yourself two sons and a wife, except everyone's older than you. You're the king of the family. That's the end, man. That's, that's what you need to do, man. You need to go. You need to get yourself a good job because you've got three. You've got two kids and a wife to, to feed now. You have to become a career man. You've taken over that family and your friend can't get angry because you're his dad. If he, if you got to tell him, you, are you going to sit him down? You got to, you got to go, son. I got something to tell you. And he's like, what do you mean, son? What are you talking about? You go, well, here's the thing, son. I've got your brother here. Well, that's not my brother. That's my dad. <laughs> that's not my brother. That's my dad. Hey, quiet when your father's speaking. No, that, that's what, that's what, that's what the dad would say. He'd say, hey, shush, dad's talking. Like, what the fuck? What are you doing, dad? I'm not dad. We're brothers now. What do you mean? Well, I'm going to let dad explain. Dad, he's fucking 19. I'm 19. You're fucking 40. You're fucking 45. What do you mean, dad? We're not brothers. You're my dad. He's not my dad. That's my mate from school. And the mum comes in. She sits down. Not not next to the dad. Next to to the new dad, the new 19-year-old dad. And she's like, son, we have sons. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> sons we have something to tell you and then and then and then and then and then you just reach over and you hold hands with the mum and then your mate goes what what the fuck you mum what are you doing what are you doing what the fuck and then the dad goes yeah hold her hand <laughs> yeah hold her hand and she's like shut up he's like oh yeah talk dirty disrespect me like, dad what are you doing i'm told you i'm not your dad we're fucking brothers he just rocked up 42 year old man wearing fucking shorts and those little propeller caps and a polo shirt with a little boat on it 
not a not a not a Nordica boat, just like a chill, like a multicolored children's boat. Doesn't fit him. He's got hairy arms. He's sitting next to you, next to your mate. What are you? What's guys? What's, what the fuck's going on, Mum? Why are you holding fans with my best friend? And well, well, Jim, I'm I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let your father tell you. And then he turns over to his dad, and his dad goes, No, no, not me. This guy. What are you doing? He goes, And and you just need to, you just need to, you just need to sit down. Lean forward, and you put your <laughs> you put your hand on his shoulder, and you go, "Son, I'm fucking your mother while your brother watches. I've got <laughs> and I need you to sign this." And you pull out a document, and it's just <laughs> and then he people he picks up, he reads it, he goes, "What?" What? Certificate of adoption? What's going on? Dad? I told you, son, I'm not your dad. I'm your brother. I was your dad, but I gave up my kingdom. And now I am your brother. And this is our dad. Mum? Are you? Are you in on this? Yes, son. (laughs) This boy, your friend... Now your father dicked me down so well, I put you up for adoption and signed him over. Your high school friend is now your father. And then the next week, just conveniently, just a coincidence, it's parent-teacher interviews. And you're in the same math class. You get there. And, you know, you get there with your parents and you have your sit-down with Mr. fucking... Mr. Stubbs, the math teacher, whatever, goes fine. And then you get up to leave, you get a good report card, and then you sit down again at the table with your 19-year-old mate, the same age. The math teacher goes, what the fuck's going on? Where's your dad? And then your mate goes, oh, this guy, he's my dad. What do you mean? He goes, oh, well, he fucked my mom so good he became my dad. He goes, right, well. Let's get this parent-teacher interview over with. Dude, seriously, I don't know. Uh, honestly, you need to get out. It is, you need to, you, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to make sure she deletes that shit. Because cause that can't get out, man. Online? Because here's the thing, if he's filming it and he gets off to fucking other dudes rooting his wife, you know what else he gets off to? Other people watching his wife. And you know what that is? Step one, he pulls out the fucking VHS tape at when he, when he gets a little bit too drunk with the boys and they all sit down and watch it. Step two, he converts that VHS tape to a DVD, puts it on his computer, uploads that shit to Pornhub. You're famous. You don't need that shit. You need to make sure they delete that stuff because on <clears throat> on the real, seriously, that's fucked that they recorded you without your consent. That is f- really, really fucked. That's not okay and you need to convey that uh, to the point where if they act shady about deleting it and you, you think they're hiding a copy, police, I would get involved because, I mean, that that is sexual assault, recording someone without their consent. Even if you consented to the fucking, you didn't know that was happening. That's fucked. Uh, you need to make sure they delete that shit. Uh, and you do not, you do not want to do that because you're going to get caught if you involve the dad because the next minute you need to, you need to get out, man. I'm talking, you need to stop fucking this, this woman. You need to, you need to stop this friendship because it's ruined. You've ruined the friendship. I mean, great story. Here's, quit while you're ahead. This is a fucking amazing story that you will remember forever. Right now, it hasn't ended badly. But I am telling you, it is not going to end well. So you can either quit while you're ahead, get the fuck out, and have this amazing story that you can keep forever, that you don't feel guilty about because no one's found out, no one's feelings are hurt, Everything's fine. Or, and then you can tell this story at a bar forever and you can laugh with everyone, right? Leave at this point. Leave at this email. This is where the story should end. They asked me to do it. I said no. 
and I fucking left and I stopped being friends with the guy as well. And that's a great story that you can tell forever. Keep the story, dude. Get the fuck out before you get the trauma too. And the trauma and the guilt. Get out. Because here's how it's going to end. You're going to fuck him. <laughs> fuck him. Her. Dad's going to watch. Then you're going to come over the fucking next day. Hang out with your mate. Play some video games. It's going to come out. At some point, it's going to come out. Hey, I didn't know your dad had a tattoo. What do you mean? How do you know dad has a tattoo? He's got a tattoo on his upper thigh. When have you seen dad's upper thigh? Well, I don't know. Um, I, I haven't. I haven't. Are you are you fucking my mum? And then fist fight. Fuck that, dude. If I found if I found out one of my mates was fucking my mum, I'd beat the shit out of them. Don't do that, okay? You need to get out. Cause this cause this is the thing. It's too close to home for your friend's sake. He doesn't need to know this shit. He probably has no idea that his mum gets fucked by every cunt in the street. And he does not need to know that because that will destroy the perception that he has of his mother and the perception that he has of his father. And their relationship and the relationship to them, it'll just, it will traumatize your friend. What you need to do is you need to end this friendship. You need to end this sexual relationship with the mom and you need to, you need to make them delete everything. Uh, and you need to get the fuck out while the story is amazing and ends well. Give yourself a happy ending. And I'm not, I'm not talking sexually. Get out. Make sure this story ends well. All right? And definitely send me a fucking update. I want to know how this shit goes, okay? Get out, dude. Get out. All right, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you vote for me in the Australian Podcast Awards. I know you haven't yet. Fucking do it, all right? I want to win this shit in the most disrespectful way possible. I don't want to, I don't want this to be close where I could end up in second place because someone pushed harder and you cunts were like, oh, I'll do it later. Do it now, all right? This will be fucking hilarious. I want to win this shit by a landslide, okay? Um, and tickets to episode 150 live on stage in Melbourne will go on sale on Tuesday at lewspears.com slash live at 12 p.m. I'll also post the link on Twitter and everywhere else, okay? Uh, all Patreon supporters get early access, uh, discounted tickets, and uh, depending on the reward level, some of you guys get free tickets too. So check out the Patreon as well. You get early access to episodes early, like this episode, which went up on Friday, all right? So thanks for listening. Uh, don't fuck your mum's friend. Your friend's... Your mum's friend. You can fuck your mum's friend. I think that's alright. Don't fuck your friend's mum. Don't fuck your mum's friend's mum. Because then you're fucking a 90 year old. And that'd be weird. Alright? Have a shit one.